How's it going everybody and welcome back to another scan time video today We're gonna to be having a look at WinCC and how to create a trend now last week We looked at how to create an IO field and we're gonna bridge off of that and show you how to create a trend inside of TIA portal Before we actually get started though give us a like on the video comment below to let us know you're watching and hit the subscribe button If you're watching us on Facebook hit the like button so you stay up to date with more new videos, right? Let's get into it so last week we created two IO fields, one which was a set point which was an input output IO field which allowed us to actually change the variable by clicking inside of the field and entering the value and the other was our actual IO field and this was simply just an output, it was just displaying the value inside of a tag and we just used one tag for these. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a trend. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two tags, one tag for the set point and one tag for the actual. That way we can actually change the values in both tags so we can see different lines on the actual trend and then what we'll do is we'll do this increase and decrease for the second tag and we can then change the value in both tags that way so to create another tag all i'm going to do is i'm just going to go to hmi tags and go to my default tag table which currently has four tags inside of it and where you see my temperature i'm going to create a new one and i'm just going to call this temperature actual like so and this is just going to be an integer once again i'm then going to go to my data view i'm going to then select actual i'm then going to go to its properties and then i'm going to change the tag from temperature to temperature actual so now i can have two different readings in these io fields next if i just go to animations display appearance Here's my temperature animation, which would then change colors from red, amber, and green. I'm then going to change that to temperature actual, like so. There we go. And I'm just going to then minimize this. Now, here we've got our increase and decrease. So this would then increase and decrease our value inside of our set point by one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this again, increase and decrease. And this time it's going to increase and decrease the actual by one. Okay, so that there is my screen now created for both the actual and the set point. And I've got the buttons here to increase and decrease the values inside of the actual IO field and inside of the set point IO field. Remember, I can also change the value inside of the set point by selecting the cell and then entering the value onto the keypad. Next what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new screen for the trend and this trend is going to look at both of these values here and display it on a graph. So what I'm going to do is just double click our new screen and now what I'm going to do is just rename the screen and I'm going to call this trend. I'm just going to go to the properties of the screen and then change the background to match the background of the other screens to a lighter gray there we go and to now add the trend to our screen all we do is we just go to our controls menu inside of our toolbox select trend view and then i'm going to click and drag this down here now i'm going to need to add navigation to from this screen so to do this go to my home screen select where we see alarms just copy that and paste it and then all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to change the alarms button here to trend. And then I'm going to have this access the trend screen. So I'm going to go to button properties, go to its event and activate the screen trends like so. And then I'll just go to another screen like data view, grab the home button, go to the trend and then paste that into here. Move my trend up a tiny bit. It's looking quite compact. We would change this around a little bit just to make it a little bit more visible. We probably would have this on a larger HMI than just a smaller HMI, but for now, this is just for testing purposes. What I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna select the trend. I'm then gonna go to its properties, go to the properties of the trend itself. And first of all, I'm going to go to the appearance and I'm just gonna change the background color to match the background of the HMI. So it looks a bit more integrated into the actual screen. The axis color, I'm gonna change that to a black. So a black color there. And the orientation is from the right. So that's fine. So we'll see the information coming in from the right hand side. We also have a ruler and this ruler is this vertical line on the trend. And this allows us to pinpoint exactly where we want to see in the trend itself. Next, if we then go to table, we can either display the table 
or not display the table. And the table is effectively this guy right here. And what this will do is it will show the information on the trend. It will show the name of what that trend is, the tag connection and the current value. I'm not too interested in this right now. So I'm just gonna uncheck this. And this way we can actually see our trend a little bit more in detail. If I then go to time axis, I can then select what I want this to be. And I can select here, my axis is gonna be time or it's gonna be points or it's gonna be tag or a constant. I'm just gonna simply select this as time so it will show you the time at the bottom and then it will show you the variable across the left and the right axes over here. The time interval in seconds is currently set to 100. If I just set that to one second, we then see an update on the screen every one second here. Next, if I then just go to the left axis, I can then tell it what the minimum and maximum of this trend is going to be. So for, for our temperature, it's only gonna be working from zero to 20. So I'm just gonna select this zero to 20 enter that there and if I then just go to label I can then say here change the markers change this to every one marker so I can now see the values on here from 0 to 5 to 10 to 50 to 20 instead of just 0 to 20 and what I could also do is I could change the increment instead of it being 5 I could change the increment to 1 and then what this will then do is it'll then show you 20 lines up across the left hand side instead of every 5 lines across the left hand side I'm just going to leave this as 5 however so we can just display the value here nice and neatly and then on the right axis I can then say show right axis or don't show right axis I'm going to keep this exactly the same so it's going to be axis end which is 20 once again and then if I go down to here I'm then going to change the marks from what for I'm then going to change that to one so it's going to show me a value on every one mark on here now if I go to the trend itself, I can then add in my two tags. So I can call this one here, temp set point. And then I can call this one temp actual, like so. And then where it says source settings, all I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna select the temp set point. This guy right here. Every one second I wanted to update. And on this chap, on my temp actual, I'm then gonna select temp actual. There we go. And it's again gonna be a one second update. From here, I can then change what style of trend I want. So I could have this being a black line, or I could have this being a dash line, or I could have this being a colored line, whatever I want this to be. I'm gonna leave this one as a green line. And I'm then going to leave this one as a red line. So our set point is going to be green and our actual is going to be red. Other than this, I can leave everything else as normal. I can then minimize this, save the project and then test this out. So now if I then just click on the start simulation, it should then start the simulation from the trend screen, which it will do. There we go. And here we are. Currently, you can now see the green line at the bottom. The red line will also be there, but the green will be on top as it was the first trend. Now, if I just go to the home screen, because currently it's all reading zeros, I want this to change its value. So if I now just go to the home screen, and then I go to data view, I can then change the values. So inside of our actual, I can then increase the actual by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I can then increase the set point to 15. I can then go home, I can then go to the trend, and now you will see the trend showing the green at 15 and the 10 as the red. Now you can see here that it's just a flat line. You saw no increment on the actual trend and that's because this is increasing every one second. So if we wanted to change this so it wouldn't increase every one second, it would show 10 seconds across the board. It would show 20 seconds across the board. We can also do that. To do that, I'm just gonna close this down. I'm then gonna go to my trend screen. I'm gonna go to its properties and I'm going to go to the time axis. And then inside of the time axis, I'm going to change the time intervals to be 60 seconds. So this is now going to show us one minute. Now, if we save the project and now if we go to the simulation. What it will then do is we'll bring up our trend screen once again. There we go. It'll then kick in shortly. 
there it is and you can see now that it's incrementing a lot slower on the actual time axis it's not currently just showing every one second it's now showing you a total of 60 seconds across the board here so if i then go to home I then go to data view and I start to increase the value inside of our set points and increasing the value inside of our actuals, decreasing the value inside of our actuals and decreasing the value inside of our set points, raising these values. So these values are now actually fluctuating here. What we will see if we go to our trend is the value actually fluctuate as well. So now we've got a historic reading on this trend and this is what we tend to use trends for is for historic readings so we can see what had happened previously on these values instead of just seeing the current value that we have at the moment we can now see a historic reading as well and that there is just a basic introduction to trend screens showing you how to display two values over a period of time and changing the properties on an actual trend i hope you've enjoyed this video remember to leave a like on the video remember to leave a comment on what you'd like to see next time and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Stay safe, everybody.